Hey everybody, Mark Davis in the immediate wake of our Tuesday, April 30th, 2013 show. If you didn't know who Jason Collins was a couple of days ago, don't feel bad. However, if you know who he is now and do not celebrate the very ground he walks on, you're supposed to feel bad. Such is the politics of homosexuality these days. So here's the deal. We learned that Jason Collins is in the NBA and he's the first guy in the NBA, NHL, Major League Baseball, NFL to come out as gay. We get to an asterisk on this, which is that he may or may not be in the NBA. He's not with a team right now. He's between teams. He's a free agent. He's 34 and scores like a point and a half per game. He may, if he were, honestly, if he were straight, his career would be over. His gayness may be the best thing he has going for him. More on that in just a moment. But once he does actually sign on with the team, some history will be made, and I'm all about that. I understand that it's history. I understand that it's groundbreaking. He's blazing a trail, which means maybe he's going to Portland. <laughs> Little NBA humor there. Anyway, uh, what we have here, though, are two very predictable reactions. When I hopped on the talk show uh, bandwagon this morning and saw that we had a, a gay guy come out in the NBA, I thought, oh, Lord, well, here, here come two things. Number one, you're going to get you're going to get actual homophobes who do exist. It, it's like, oh Lord, more gay stuff. Just gays, gays everywhere. I'm sick of hearing about gays, which may or may not be actual homophobia, but you know you're going to get that. The second thing you're going to get is the push from the dominant uh, media culture to lift this up to to have him be some kind of Jackie Robinson in the modern day. And you're going to hear the words courage. You're going to hear the words heroism. Well, let's tap the brakes a little bit on heroism. Heroism to me is doing something. First of all, the real heroes are, you know, first responders, military, guys who storm the beaches at Normandy. But I know there's a sort of a lowercase h for a heroism of a different type. And then in pop culture, various other things, there are things you can do that are brave, that are courageous, to which we also attach a certain junior grade of heroism. But is this that? Uh, we are not a homophobic country. Good Lord, we're quite the opposite. We, we're being uh, prodded at every turn to, to accept homosexuality, not just as the exact equal of everything else, but somehow in some ways loftier and more admirable as all kinds of gay trailblazing uh, is, is given these... Um, these high accolades. But here's the thing. If the homophobes are going, oh, you know, screw him, I don't care about him, and, and the dominant media culture in the gay lobby are going, oh, like he's, you know, angel walking the earth, let me walk into the middle of that, almost quite literally, and suggest that not only do I not wish him ill, good for him. It's kind of interesting. Let's see how this goes. It is a lot of notoriety. People will probably chant some unkind things from the stands, which they, of course, should not do. But as far as acceptance, as far as being heralded, Dude got a call from President Obama, all right? Really? So is this really heroism? Coming out as gay in the NBA in, oh, I don't know, 1965, that's heroic. Coming out as gay in the NBA today, Jason Collins is the most beloved athlete in America today. So spare me a little bit on the heroism, but I'm on board with the history. And maybe there is a good thing that comes from this in the following way. If in the future there's a really, a guy who's not past his prime, who uh, comes up in the NBA, NHL, NFL, NBA, you know, whatever, Major League Baseball, and really has something to contribute. He's young, in his prime, has a lot to offer, uh, but hesitates because he doesn't want the slings and arrows of being gay in pro sports. Maybe being gay in pro sports isn't that big a deal anymore. Kind of like having a black president. Isn't that big a deal? Once you've, once you've got one, it's like all the others that follow are sort of taken at face value and not just seen as black or as gay. To his credit, in a conversation with George Stephanopoulos on Good Morning America today, uh, George asked him, what if, uh, what if you got like a 12-year-old boy and he's, he's good at basketball, but he's gay? What do you tell him? Of course, I had to pause right there and say the first thing I tell him is, you're 12 years old. The concrete might not be set yet. Can you sit tight a minute? But that's just me. Let's say, let's make him 16 or something. And he's, he's really great at basketball and stone cold gay. What do you tell him? And Jason Collins himself said that it's not about being gay. It's about basketball. So get good at basketball, have a work ethic, do what's good for your team. And I thought that was refreshing and great. Now for Jason Collins, it's all about being gay. That's the most noteworthy thing about him. Again, a guy with his stats and his age, if he's straight, is out you know, shopping for you know, retirement property. But as it is, this will be noteworthy. And, and here's the thing. Somebody called me and said, you know what? This might have been a career move for him. This makes him noteworthy. This means he might get a one-year contract, whereas he otherwise might not have. And you know what? That's true. And you know what else? 
There's nothing wrong with that at all. Use what you got, man. I don't think we'll have a lot of guys making, oh, hey, I'm gay too. I don't I don't think they'll be doing that. But if, the, if he's gonna be the first, and that means he gets a one-year contract somewhere, here in Dallas, Mark Cuban has said he, he'd be honored to have you know, like the first gay player. Well, Mark, here's your chance. I'm guessing he's affordable. And uh, I guess the problem is that there, there might be somebody more worthy who will not get a shot to be on a team so that we can have the gay guy and make all that history and get all those accolades. But you know what? If that's what a team wants to do, that too is the marketplace and they get to do that. So we'll see how it all goes and chronicle this as we do virtually everything else. It's the Mark Davis Show, Monday through Thursdays. It's a 7 to 10 Central Time experience. Fridays, it's 5. Mm. 5 a.m., 5 to 8 with Bill Bennett's Morning in America, nationwide, and then 8 to 10 locally. But you know what? What is this pesky clock time you speak of? Right here on this website that you've seen fit to visit, uh, hop over to the Mark Davis page and click on podcasts, and there you go. Listen to any show, anytime, on your own time. Stripped of those pesky commercials and newscasts, although we love commercials and newscasts, and we love you. Thank you for listening and for watching here on 660 AM, The Answer.